Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is Lecture 6F, where we're extending our analysis of the science behind SNP typing to think about how we can develop personal predictions about phenotypes. And so first we'll talk about, remind you how genome-wide association studies work, and talk about how genome-wide association studies connect SNP genotypes to phenotypes, giving a measure that's called the odds ratio. And then we'll talk about how individual SNP typing can use these odd ratios to predict the probability of an individual phenotype. So a reminder of genome-wide association studies. They start with a population that's split into two extremes. In this one that we described, it was a, one extreme was tall people, and the other extreme was short people. And then these people are typed at about a million SNP loci, loci all around the genome that have been mapped by HapMap. And the SNP alleles are examined for an association with the phenotype, looking for a SNP position at which one allele is preferentially seen in tall people, the other allele is preferentially seen in short people. That's the association part of the study. And one outcome of that is the predictions of genes that should be investigated to better understand the phenotype. So because HapMap has constructed the map of all of the SNP variation, it's possible to then connect each SNP with particular genes that may be the reason why that SNP shows the association of particular alleles with particular extremes of the phenotype. The other way to use genome-wide association studies is in personal genomic analysis. And that works as follows. We've established the statistical correlation between a particular SNP locus and one extreme or the other of phenotype. And this, this lets us specify a numerical probability of that phenotype for each genotype. And that prob set of probabilities is called the odds ratios. There's one for each genotype of the SNP, and you'll see how that plays out in a second. These then can be used in personal SNP typing, which begins with a person whose phenotype is not known, at least for the features of interest. This could be me, for instance. And that person is typed at the same million SNP loci, and then attention is made, is paid to the particular SNP loci that were found to be associated with particular phenotypes. And the information from the genome-wide association study is used, specifically the odds ratios are used, to predict that individual's probability or risk of that phenotype. Now, here's how it plays out with a particular phenotype, and that is susceptibility to the autoimmune disease lupus. So genome-wide association studies have found that the high risk of lupus is associated with T alleles of this particular SNP. So if you have two T alleles, your risk is 1.84 times the risk of the average person whose genotype we didn't know. If you heterozygous, you've got a T allele and a G allele, your risk is slightly higher. But if you've got two G alleles, then your risk is lower than average. So a point I need to reinforce, um, I think I made it earlier, but I'm going to make it again. And that is the question, do the SNP alleles that genome-wide association studies find cause the differences in the phenotype that are being studied? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. In the case of lupus risk, 
Probably not. And that's because, we can say this because I used HapMap to see where is this SNP. It's in the middle of a great big intron in the middle of a gene. The gene has been associated with lupus. Other SNPs um, in the gene are also associated with lupus. But a SNP in the middle of the intron is probably not causing the difference. More generally, sometimes genome-wide association studies identify SNP alleles that directly cause the phenotypic differences. For instance, here I've drawn a gene exons and introns, and I've drawn a SNP allele that's actually in the coding sequence. In this case, it might be the case that the difference between, say, G and T actually is causing the difference in phenotype. But in most cases, the SNP alleles aren't in a gene or even in the intron. They're just close enough to the non-SNP alleles that you tend to find them associated with the genotype here correlate strongly with the genotype here. But the alleles that cause the phenotypic differences are probably non-SNP alleles that are in the coding sequence or in regulatory regions. So here are some more examples of odds ratios for genetic disease risks. Here again is lupus, and here is rheumatoid arthritis, a different SNP different alleles, T and C, again, one genotype is associated with high risk. The other gene, two genotypes are both associated with low risk. In this case, the heterozygote has lower than average risk. Cirrhosis, again, the effects aren't that strong, um, but having two Ts increases your risk. The other two genotypes reduce your risk. For Crohn's disease and intestinal disease, um, the A allele increases your risk, the G <coughs> allele reduces it, and heterozygotes <coughs> have a slightly higher risk. These data only apply for the type of population for which the genome-wide association study was done. So, for instance, the risk values, the, re the odds ratios for rheumatoid arthritis only apply to people of European ancestry. And that's because their genetic background, all the other alleles in their genome, are going to be more similar to the people, the Europeans in whom this genome-wide study was done. So a genome-wide study in Europeans established odds ratios for Europeans. And we cannot assume that the same odds ratios would apply to people of Asian background or of African background. In fact, of course, they may not apply to at much finer scales, but we lack the um, database so far to do more than simply say, well, this is Europeans, this is Asians. Um, the lupus data only applies to women of European background, and that's because lupus is more common in women, so the genome-wide study was done in European women. Now, here are some examples of individual data. So the genome-wide study lets us predict how phenotypes differ from the average. Here are six individuals, um, and here are their genotypes for a SNP that's associated with the risk of stomach cancer. And we can see in this case, this study was done in Asians, and the AG allele has a high, the AG genotype has a higher risk, the AA genotype has a lower risk. For age-related macular degeneration, that's an eye disease associated with aging, um, individuals with the AA genotype, two A alleles, are at a much higher risk and individuals with an AC genotype are pretty normal. Individuals with a CC genotype are at much lower risk. Now, you might notice that these two numbers aren't exactly the same. That's probably because there are other alleles that have other SNP loci that have been identified that are associated with age-related macular, mac, macular degeneration. And these two individuals may have differed at another allele. 
So here's a question. Person D, here's person D, is Asian. Here's the information about their odds ratios. How does person, how does having this information change the estimate of risk of stomach cancer for a person D relative to the average person?